What's up my rakes and hoes and other assorted garden tools? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, gardening enthusiast Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. And the difference between gardening enthusiast Zach and regular Zach is that I like gardening. Not that regular Zach is opposed to gardening. I didn't think this character through. All right, let's get our trowels and start digging into this story called, uh, Boyfriend of five years cheated on me, so I ruined his precious RuneScape account. And quick gardening fact, you can save money by growing your own food. My boyfriend and I had met online well over six years ago through an online game by the name of RuneScape. He was 14 and I was 17, but it felt like we had been friends forever. We both played the game very often and connected through it, eventually leading us to start a long-distance relationship. Things began to escalate as the years went on and we began seeing each other in person every few months or so. We were about 1,500 miles apart, so one of our main priorities for the future was moving in together and closing the distance. My job had prevented us from doing that, but we had finally set a date for me to move in with him in December of this year. Our relationship never had any serious issues and I was more than happy to have him in my life as he was happy to have me. As I got older, I began to play RuneScape less and less as work took up most of my time. He continued to play regularly, if not more than he had when I first met him. He could never really hold down a job and barely had an income. But I supported him throughout the years and even paid his rent from across the country after he moved out of his parents' house a few years ago. I never really minded it because he was a sweetheart, but we began to have problems. In November of last year, I couldn't help pay his monthly rent. I was short on cash after having to pay my own living expenses alongside car repairs and bills I owed to the state and I just couldn't afford to support him at the time. When I called him one night to discuss it, he freaked out and started crying that he didn't want to live with his parents again. I tried calming him down and even suggesting that I could help him find a temporary job until I could start providing for him again, but he wasn't having it. He claimed his parents would abuse him if he returned home, which I know for a fact isn't true because him and his parents have stayed with me several times. They've given him the world. I eventually did calm down, but he remained passive-aggressive the entire night, and we eventually hung up. Because I cared about him, I reached out to his father the next day and informed him that he would probably be moving back home after his lease expired that month. I explained how I wouldn't be able to afford paying his living for a month or two and if there were any local jobs he could work in order to, you know, make an income. Apparently, a friend of his father needed help managing a small warehouse for his business and was looking to potentially hire my boyfriend for the season. It paid $15 an hour and was super easy, lifting boxes, sweeping the floors, and taking inventory. I brought it up to my boyfriend that same night and he was not having it. Not only did he not want to work in a crappy warehouse, but he didn't want to work at all. All he planned to do, day in, day out, was play RuneScape. I brought up a few other job listings I had found in his area, and he immediately shot all of them down as well. He then had the audacity to comment about how he thinks I should work harder and possibly work a second job. I kept my composure and simply argued against it until we eventually hung up. I collapsed on my bed and cried for a good hour or two afterwards because of the intense emotional stress I was under. Not only do I work 8 hours a day, 6 days a week, I'm also an industrial meteorologist. If I remember correctly, that's a lot more work than playing RuneScape every day and using my Hulu account. I really considered breaking up with him right that moment but I changed my mind and decided to give him another chance. Looking back on it, big mistake. I messaged him throughout the night and we sort of made up, but I was still a little uneasy about the entire event. He had moved back in with his parents by the time December had come and I began to help him look for jobs while he wasted his life away playing video games. I eventually persuaded him to start working at a small retail store near his house and he thankfully began to make some money. I would still buy him video games and transfer him money like normal because I spoiled him and our relationship began to feel somewhat okay again. Last month, both him and I put our money together to fly him across the United States to stay with me for four days. 
We hadn't seen each other in person since last summer, so we were both looking forward to it. He arrived and we had a great time for the first few days because he could actually take me on dates for once with his new income. Everything was perfect until I caught a glimpse of his phone lock screen while he was taking a shower. When are you gonna leave her? The Discord message read. I could have ran into the bathroom and snapped his neck in that moment, but I kept myself together as best as I could without killing him. I had never felt so used, disrespected, or hated in my entire life. When he came out of the bathroom, I gave him a fake smile, but I genuinely hated him from that moment on. He could have dropped dead on the floor and I would have spit on him. I spent the remainder of the night watching him play RuneScape and I remained very quiet. He took notice of this and asked me if everything was okay and I lied and told him I was fine. When it came time to go to sleep, I let that trucker climb into bed with me and he tried initiating sex because it was our final night together. I rejected as politely as I could without tearing his member completely off. He was disappointed but went out like a light. Immediately after he went to sleep, I reached over and unplugged his phone and started digging through his messages with that girl. I feared that I had misinterpreted the message I had seen, but I was completely right after all. Not only had he been cheating on me, he had been doing so for nearly six months, leading me to believe that he hooked up with another girl directly after I couldn't pay for his living in November. I scrolled through probably 100,000 messages and wanted to vomit my insides out by the end of it. He had talked crap about me, claimed I was emotionally abusive, just as he had done with his parents, and even sent this girl my nude so they could pick me apart physically. When morning came, I had slept in because of how late I was up reading his messages. I woke up to find him on my computer playing RuneScape and eating my food. It was like all of our relationship had been wiped from my mind, and he was now an evil stranger sitting in my house. I wanted to scream at him. I wanted to tear him apart and kick him out of my house onto the street, but I didn't. In fact, I gave him as much love and attention as I could muster that morning because I wanted to leave things feeling normal between us. I dropped him off at the airport and we had a quick and somber goodbye before I left him forever, unbeknownst to him. I drove back home as calmly as I could before crying my eyes out in a mix of complete anger and emotional pain. I ended up kicking my bed frame so hard that the wood split and I had to buy another one recently. If only it were his face. I wanted to break his heart by the time he arrived back home, but I wanted it to really hurt. I logged into our joint RuneScape account that we had made several years ago, where him and I would work on training the same account and raising it almost like our baby. We had always joked that if we were ever to split up, he would take half the account's bank contents and I would take the rest. I took my half and transferred it to my main account, before taking his half and giving it away to random people throughout the game. Every last bit of it. Even items I couldn't normally trade away, I used a spell to convert the items into coins, which I then gave away as well. The bank was now empty. It then occurred to me that I had the credentials to his main account, they were written down in my desk as he would frequently have me train his farming skill every so often. I didn't hesitate at all and logged into his precious 14-year-old RuneScape account. I immediately took all of the contents of his bank and sold it all on the Grand Exchange, a marketplace in the game. It took an extremely long time to clear out his bank, but he would still be flying home for about another four hours, so I had plenty of time. By the time I had sold and destroyed everything, I had four stacks of coins totaling over eight and a half billion. Now, what to spend it on? Hmm. I wanted to waste his life earnings on the most useless, stupid thing I could think of, besides him. I logged back into my main account to reach out to a friend of mine that collects massive stacks of burnt food. For the unaware, burnt food in RuneScape has no use. You can't unburn them, eat them, or even sell them on the Grand Exchange. They are, however, tradable amongst players. I've always poked fun at this guy for collecting burnt food, but I was now more thankful than ever to make his acquaintance in my revenge. 
I asked him what the most obscure, unwanted item was of the burnt food variety, and he replied, burnt spider. Lo and behold, he had roughly 6,000 of the item spider on shaft burnt in his bank that he was willing to sell to me. Feeling generous with my ex-boyfriend's coins, I gave my friend a full stack of 2.147 billion coins and left a very happy customer. I dropped the 6,083 burnt spiders in his bank, but still had about 6 billion coins left to spend. With the remaining money, I decided to treat myself. I went on to the Grand Exchange and ended up going on a shopping spree. The first thing I bought were 100 bonds. If you're not familiar, a bond in RuneScape grants you 14 days of in-game membership. After trading all 100 bonds to my account, I now have almost 4 years of membership paid for me. I spent a majority of his coins on extremely nice armor and weapons, all of which went straight into my account. He still had about an extra billion, so I spent it on the supplies I needed to level up an expensive skill of mine. By the end of the afternoon, he was left with a measly 150,000 coins in his bank, all of which I gave away to a guy cooking pizzas outside of the exchange. Nothing was left, so I decided to pick up a pile of bones off the ground and leave it solely in his bank account. It might sound petty, but I laughed for a while. Now I know what you're thinking. This is so cruel. You ruined tens of thousands of hours he had put into a game. Well, it was time that he learned that I can be a mean person. A mean, mean person. <laughs> On top of spending every last coin he had ever made, I leveled his defense skill. This may not sound bad. In fact, it sounds like a good thing. I helped his account progress, right? Well, no. Unfortunately for my ex, he had what players commonly refer to as a pure account, meaning he never, ever dared to level his defense skill from level 1 in order to keep the lowest defense stats but have the highest offense stats. Well, not anymore. Have fun with your permanent level 6 defense. Cycling through hundreds of possible forms of revenge in my head, I settled on getting rid of his house. It's quite an achievement in RuneScape to have a nice house of your own. In fact, he had one of the nicest I had ever seen in the game. In order to have it built, he must have spent well over a few billion coins. Too bad I had disassembled it all in a matter of minutes, deleting it all into cyberspace. And there's no insurance either. He's gonna have to rebuy everything with his non-existent money if he wants a new house. Bye bye, Casa de Cheater. Scrolling through his friends list, I decided to act as him and pay a visit to his friends who were currently online and admit that I had cheated on my girlfriend and was fully proud of it. If his friends hadn't removed him by that point, I removed them. All of them. Lastly, to add a beautiful little cherry to this revenge filled cake, I changed his username. You're able to change your username once a month on RuneScape. So I changed his to let everyone know that he's a dirty cheater. I obviously won't drop his username here, but I did the best I could to embarrass him with the 12 character limit. He should be able to reclaim his previous username in about 3 weeks, but if he waits too long, I'll be able to swipe it and slap it on a throwaway account of my own forever. He sent me a very hateful and aggressive message later that night, followed by pictures of him crying. I wrote him a sincere message officially ending the relationship, while also scaring him away by threatening to take him to court over sharing my nudes and possibly filing a cease and desist if he were to try and contact me anytime soon. I don't plan on doing any of that, I just don't want to speak to him ever again. Wow, I didn't really expect this to blow up as much as it did, ha ha To clarify, this post is referring to old RuneScape rather than RuneScape 3. We met playing RuneScape 3, but immediately put all our focus into old school when it first released. He even transferred 90% of his RuneScape 3 worth over to old school through bots and such, making this revenge even sweeter. So while his old school account is only 6 years old, as is mine, his fortunes were the collective effort of a previous 8 years on RuneScape 3. Thank you so much for the reddit gold. I don't know what to do with it, but I'm glad I've given you a revenge boner. Okay, first off, amazing job hitting him right where it hurt. 
Like, it's one thing to cheat, but it's another thing entirely to do what this guy did. So basically, this kid, he 100% had it coming. There's, there's no debating that. That guy's garbage for what he did to this person. OP, Reddit person, girl. However, there is a silver lining. Other than that, um, OP, Reddit person, girl here has, you know, a bunch of cool stuff at her boyfriend's expense. <laughs> Also, it's a good thing that this is a young person who has no work ethic and realized that you can play video games all day with little to no consequences. And you might think, oh, as a childhood, I used to do this, you know, after I came home from school, it made me happy. So you end up playing video games all day and you think you're happy, but you're really, really not. You might think you are, but that life is unfulfilling completely. Video games were great because you're comparing them to school and stuff. Soon, hopefully, he'll grow up and realize that moderation is the key to happiness. Just make sure the stuff you enjoy is what you're looking forward to and is a highlight of your day. Because if that's all you do, then soon there are no highlights. Alright, this story's called Mess with the Hair and You Get What's Fair. So, ladies and gentlemen, I started my petty journey at the mere age of two when my very natural curly hair started to grow and flourish. Yes, I was blessed with the curls of an angel and have had many compliments such as being compared to the female version of Brian May. However, having such hair comes with its disadvantages. Many members of the public think it's okay to grope and pull and finger my hair just because of its natural exterior. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've had balding men, young children, and middle-aged women fist my hair, bloody ruffle it, and freaking pull it. At least buy me dinner first, Susan. Well, no more. I decided that if someone were to touch me, they were getting touched right back. Every time some unfortunate soul waltzed their way over to touch the magnificent locks, a sickening smile crept onto my face. I have caressed many arms. I have ruffled many hairs. I've even gone as far as bopping someone on the head when they pulled my curl to watch it spring back up. I truly give no fricks anymore and it's glorious. The looks on their faces is always hilarious as they don't expect to be touched back even after invading my personal space. As of right now, my reign is on hold, but surely enough, I'll be back on the streets. PSA, do not touch people without permission. It's rude and uncomfortable as crap. Uh, that's right, do not touch people without permission. If you like someone's hair, make sure you tell them, hey, your hair looks great. Don't be creepy about it, and also it kind of depends on where you are. Because I'm from Texas and people are typically pretty social, not everybody, but that's just in general. So if someone's dressed nice or th their hair looks nice, sometimes I might want to tell them, hey, your hair looks really nice, or hey, nice outfit, or something like that. And in my experience, it always has gone pretty well. They just like, thank you, and they smile, and they feel a little bit better, and I feel pretty good because that was fun. But I was in New York, and this woman was dressed so cool, like she was wearing, I don't know, she looked really cool. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, your outfit is so cool. And she gave me like the weirdest look. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, then never mind. <laughs> and then I kind of got worried that I made her uncomfortable, which is not what anyone wants to do. Don't take my advice, okay? Your priority should be not making people uncomfortable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.